can you talk a little bit about the different types of heart failure? You had mentioned a little bit about sometimes it's a contractility problem, sometimes it's a stiffness issue. How is heart failure typically described or categorized? So, so I think that's a good, uh, looking at the ejection fraction, which is a way to measure the strength of the heart muscle, we could distinguish what we call systolic heart failure from diastolic heart failure. So the systolic heart failure is uh, an issue of weakness in the heart muscle. The heart is not pumping enough blood forward. Therefore, there is a lot of blood inside. When the blood is coming back, the pressure in the system is very high. So that is systolic heart failure. And it's important to distinguish when somebody has con uh, congestive heart failure to distinguish if this is due to systolic or diastolic because the therapy is slightly different. In diastolic heart failure, then the issue is a stiffness. The, the heart muscle could, be, uh, could have a good contractility. In fact, many of these patients have a elevated ejection fraction. It could be 65%, 70%, which is the normal is at around 60. And the issue is that the heart has become thick and stiff. So even though it's sending a lot of blood out, the blood that comes doesn't have really a good space to accommodate. And again, the pressure is elevated. In the cases of systolic heart failure, the cornerstone of therapy are beta blockers and ACE inhibitors or ARVs if the kidney function is appropriate. If the kidney function is abnormal, then they will need to use hydralazine and nitrates. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are patients with systolic heart failure. Okay. Sometimes patients with systolic heart failure actually are not hypertensive. They have uh, they are hypotensive, and then we play with it because the lower the pressure, the better that it would be uh, for the heart to continue to do in the long term. Okay. In cases of diastolic heart failure, then the beta blockers and the ACE inhibitors are not as important. In this case, the fluid management is the mm -hmm. key, giving diuretics, fluid restriction, sodium restriction, and of course, controlling the blood pressure. If you have to control the blood pressure, then you may favor the use of a beta blocker and an ACE inhibitor, but it's not, there is not necessarily a benefit from this type of agents in diastolic heart failure. Okay, so is there a, so talking about the, the two differences, you mentioned ejection fraction. Um, so is that a key component to helping you differentiate systolic from diastolic? That's the key component. Okay. That's how you make the distinction. So you, if, somebody is com if somebody comes with shortness of breath, you do a chest x-ray and they have fluid in their lungs, or you examine them and they have crackles in their lungs, uh, or you look at their neck and the JVP is elevator, they have, you, it's very hard to distinguish just by the physical exam whether this is systolic or diastolic. You could use some pearls where, where is the PMI, where is the point of maximal impulse in the patient. If it's displaced, so then this suggests that this is systolic because the heart has enlarged and is dilated. If it's not displaced, then it, it may be diastolic. But the reality is that you need to have an assessment of the ejection fraction. And if the ejection fraction is you know, six, uh, 55 or more, then this is diastolic heart failure and it's an issue of the relaxation of the heart. And if it's less than 50, then it's systolic heart failure is an issue in the contractility. Of course, there are patients that have both, that do have diastolic and systolic heart failure. And I would say most patients, pretty much all patients that have systolic heart failure also have diastolic heart failure on top of it. Because the heart is not contracting properly, but it's not relaxing properly. Is either. the opposite true? No. So, so we should really say... Heart failure with preserved systolic function okay. is what we should say, which are the diastolic heart failure. So by definition, the diastolic heart failure had appropriate contractility. Okay. Now, if you get more sophisticated and you look at how the fibers are moving, you know, it appears that the contraction is also diminished and it's an issue of the cavity. That is what we measure. We measure the cavity contracting, but this is a little bit more sophisticated. So the point being, there is decreasing the strength of the heart muscle in patients with preserved ejection fraction when they have diastolic heart failure, but this is beyond of the scope of what we're discussing. Uh, in any rate, if your systolic function is preserved, you will be categorized as a diastolic heart failure. Now, since ejection fraction is so important, um, how is that measured? So the way we measure it most of the time is with an ultrasound, with an echocardiogram. And it is just a relationship of what is the volume of the heart just before the contraction, which is the diastolic volume, and what is the volume of the heart at the peak contraction. Since the heart doesn't empty all the way, the ejection fraction is not 100%. So the heart 
empties up around 60% of the diastolic volume, and that's the normal ejection fraction. You can also measure the ejection fraction uh, with uh, a heart catheterization. Uh, you, you inject contrast inside of the left ventricle, and you take a picture to see how much the heart is moving. Uh, that is only a two-dimensional uh, representation of, uh, of uh, the left ventricle. And you can use some nuclear modalities uh, like MOGA scans or the nuclear stress tests are ways that you can also use to see uh, what is the ejection fraction. So with the, your, the ejection fraction then is just how much blood, the percent of blood that's there before contraction that's there after. And you said typically that's measured with an ultrasound. Sometimes you measure it with a cath by looking at how much dye goes out. And then the nuclear studies are where you attach essentially little flags to the cells and see how much goes out. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm.